I mean, science is an extremely successful uh, operation, probably the most successful thing that human beings have, have, have enterprise that human beings have actually taken up or, or run. But its power comes from its limitations. So the reason why it's so powerful is because it says, I'm only going to study those things which are repeatable, which means I can do them again and again, which means if I do it here in Oxford, um, somebody in Cambridge, um, if they're smart, can get the same results, or somebody in Australia can get the same results. And so that limits, in some sense, what I can study. But that's why it's so powerful. But there are many aspects of life which are not capturable in that way, things that are not repeatable. And I think many aspects of our faith are not repeatable in the same sense. Although I think there are things we can test. We can test prayer. We can test God's faithfulness. Um, but there's an aspect of it which is God intervening, which is different. So that makes it somehow not amenable to, to, to the scientific method. And there are aspects of our daily life which are not amenable to scientific methods. And so let me ask a really simple example. So let's say I want to get married. Right? So a truly irrational thing would be just to go on the street and pick the first girl that I see and say, marry me. Right? So probably I get a slap. But what I would do in practice is meet somebody, find out whether we are compatible, whether we like each other, whether we have similar life goals, similar values. I might want to see how that person interacts with her friends, what her friends think of her. I might want to see something about her family. I might want to see, ask people that I really trust, what do they think of us together? And those are all rational things. But at the end of the day, if I decide to get married, I have to make a kind of step of faith because I won't know what it's like to be married until I'm married. Right? And so that is not a non-scientific step, step. I can't take that scientifically. I can't do repeatable experiments. I mean, people try with marriage, but it's not necessarily a good idea. Right? So I have to make some kind of step of faith. That doesn't make it irrational or dumb. That's just the way the world is. And I think most important decisions in life are like that. They're not amenable to the scientific method by itself. That's not to say I can't use the scientific method to help me in the choice of a partner. For example, people do uh, compatibility tests, and those have been carefully selected by looking at lots of examples of people that are married, testing personalities. That's only part of the story. That's not the whole story. I can't get married because we both score 95% on the compatibility test. Maybe I don't like the person. Right? All those kinds of things are connected. And so I think there's a sense in which a lot of life isn't amenable to the scientific method by itself. It doesn't mean the scientific method is, is not powerful. It is very powerful. But it's perfectly powerful within its limits. And there are large swathes of life which are uh, not amenable to science, but doesn't mean that they're irrational or silly. It just means that there's other ways of th knowing them. And so I think religion in many ways touches more on those other ways of thinking about the world. And so when I grew up in Africa, I saw also aspects, what I would call supernatural aspects, of God intervening in the world. And they also made me realize that science couldn't study those in principle, really. Um, and so therefore, the scientific method would always be very limited doesn't mean it's not very powerful or interesting or fun or attractive. It's just important to remember what, what it can and can't do.